Canto 9, Circle 6, The Heretics. My face had paled to a mask of cowardice when I saw my guide turn back. The sight of it the sooner brought the color back to his. He stood apart like one who strains to hear what he cannot see, for the eye could not reach far across the vapors of that midnight air. Yet, surely, we were meant to pass these tombs, he said aloud. If not, so much was promised. Oh, how time hangs and drags till our aid comes. I saw too well how the words with which he ended covered his start. And even perhaps I drew a worse conclusion from that than he intended. Tell me, master, does anyone ever come from the first ledge whose only punishment is hope cut off into this dreary bottom? I put this question to him, still in fear of what his broken speech might mean, and he? Rarely do any of us enter here. Once before, it is true, I crossed through hell, conjured by cruel Erito, who could call the spirit to their bodies. Her dark spell forced me, newly stripped of my mortal part, to enter through this gate and summon out a spirit from Judaica. Take heart, that is the last death and the darkest layer and the farthest from heaven which encircles all. And at that time, I came back even from there. The marsh from which the stinking gases bubble lies all about this capital of sorrow, whose gates we may not pass now without trouble. And this, and more, he expounded. But the rest was lost on me, for sudden my attention was drawn to the turret with the fiery crest, where all at once three hellish and inhuman furies sprang to view, bloodstained and wild. Their limbs and gestures hinted they were women. Belts of greenest hydras round, wound and wound about their waist, and snakes and horned serpents grew from their heads like matted hair and bound their horrid brows. My master, who well knew the handmaids of the Queen of Woe, cried, Look, the Terrorinis of Hecate's crew, that is Megara to the left of the tower. Alecto is the one who raves on the right. Tisiphone stands between them, and he said no more. With their palms they beat their brows, with their nails they clawed their bleeding breasts, and such mad wails broke from them that I drew close to the poet, overawed. And all together screamed, looking down at me, Call Medusa, that we may change him to stone. Too lightly we let Theseus go free. Turn your back and keep your eyes shut, for should the Gorgon come, and you look at her, never again would you return to the light. This was my guide's command, and he turned me about himself, and would not trust my hands alone, but with his placed on mine held my eyes shut. Men of sound intellect and probity, weigh with good understanding what lies hidden behind the veil of my strange allegory. Suddenly, there broke on the dirty swell of the dark marsh a squall of terrible sound, that sent a tremor through both shores of hell, a sound as if two continents of air, one frigid and one scorching, clashed head-on in a war of winds that stripped the forest bare, ripped off whole boughs, and blew them helter-skelter along the range of dust it raised before it and made the beasts and shepherds run for shelter. The master freed my eyes. Now turn, he said, and fix your nerve of vision on the foam. There where the smoke is thickest and most acrid, as frogs before the snake that hunts them down churn up their pond in flight until the last squats on the bottom as if turned to stone, so I saw more than a thousand ruined souls scatter away from one who crossed dry shod the Stygian march into hell's burning bowels. With his left hand, he fanned away the dreary vapors of that sink as he approached, and only of that annoyance did he seem wary. Clearly he was a messenger from God's throne, and I turned to my guide, but he made me a sign that I should keep my silence and bow down. Ah, was scorn breathed from that angel present, he reached the gate of Dis, and with a wand he waved it open, for there was no resistance. Outcasts of heaven, you twice loathed crew, he cried upon that terrible sill of hell, how does this insolence still live in you? 
Why do you set yourselves against that throne whose will none can deny and which times pass has added to your pain for each rebellion? Why do you butt against fate's ordinance? Your Cerebrus, if you recall, still wears his throat and chin peeled for such arrogance. Then he turned back, and through the same filthy tide by which he had come, he did not speak to us, but went his way like one preoccupied by other presences than those before him. And we moved toward the city, fearing nothing after his holy words. Straight through the dim and open gate, we entered unopposed, and I, eager to learn what new state of hell rose burning fortress walls and closed, began to look about the very moment we were inside. And I saw on every hand a countryside of sorrow and new torment. And as Arles, where the Rhone sinks into the stagnant marshes, as at Pola by the Quarnaro Gulf, whose waters close Italy, and wash her farthest reaches. The uneven tombs cover the even plain. Such fields I saw there spread in all directions, except that here the tombs were chests of pain. For in a ring around each tomb, great fires raised every wall to a red heat. No smith works hotter iron in his forge. The beers stood with their lids upraised, and from their pits an anguish moaning rose in the dead air from the desolation of tormented spirits. When I... Master, what shades are these who lie buried in these chests and fill the air with such painful and unending cry? These are the arch heretics of all cults, with all their followers, he replied, far more than you would think lie stuffed into these vaults. Like lies, like in every heresy, and the monuments are fired some more, some less, to each depravity its own degree. He turned then, and I followed through that night between the wall and the torments, bearing right.